Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Roblox Game Development. Today's episode, it we're going to be making our bullets for our gun actually propel themselves forward for the first time. I'm really excited about this. It's the first time I'll ever script this to happen without like just free modeling it. And that's getting me pretty pumped. Alright, so let's go to the starter pack light firing all right so so far we've made bullets fall to the floor two finger clap that's all we deserve all right um we've made bullets fall to the floor and we've checked a bunch of stuff that's great and all but there's a lot left to do um so and we actually have to add another well, we don't have to add another check-in, but we should, and we will. Alright, so we're going to check if char find first child humanoid, then, and, and one last check if, and we've probably got a bunch of this, don't we? Yeah, there we go. Alright, and if char.humanoid.health is greater than zero, then. Alright, so we're going to cut fire and paste it in here, but we've actually got a lot left to do. Let's go up to fire, and we're going to add another, okay, another uh, thing to this right now. It's going to be a parameter. This parameter is just going to be V, like it typically is, um, and what that stands for is velocity. Velocity is the speed and direction of an object. So actually we'll name this D because to be perfectly technical with you guys, it's really more of just the direction. We add the velocity in, in this script. So fire, all right? But we have to supply that parameter. How? <sighs> well, it's a it's not too hard whenever you click in Roblox let me show you guys this real quick um, thing about Roblox is there's several ways of locomotion with just your character one I use the most is walking with WASD you can also walk with uh, the arrow keys turn your screen and all that but back Back a few years ago, uh, maybe only a year ago even, you used to move your mouse around and there would be this green circle underneath your cursor and if you clicked, you would move that way. I haven't seen that in a very long time, come to think of it. I never thought of that. I never used it, uh, except when I first joined Roblox and was just figuring out the controls. But clicking would move you to where you're clicking and it would be called in the humanoid humanoid dot target point it would change that property so we're going to be using humanoid dot target point to figure out where they last clicked alright so local and we don't need local target pause for target position equals human or let's make a variable here why? Okay, hum equals char dot humanoid. Alright, and target pause equals hum dot target point. Alright, and then, you know what? Actually, that's probably it. Um, it's the target pause, because. We'll, we'll fix that if we need to, but I think that'll be plenty. Plenty to work off of. Um, we might, might fix that for first person later. I don't know. Alright, uh, once we do that fire, actually, since we are doing that, we're going to cut the reloading. Uh, we're going to paste it down here, and we're going to cut the reloading, and we're going to paste it right in here. <sighs> Darn thing. Alright, tab this all the way over. Tab this all the way over. Alright. So before or after we fire, we want to wait a half second before they can fire again. 
So the reloading is going to work just fine here. Alright, so now we can press F6. Now our bullet is still not going to go anywhere yet. But we can always check for errors real quick. I'm almost certain there won't be any. But, alright, we're just dropping bullets everywhere we go. But thankfully now it's taking about, what, 30 or a half second, sorry, a half second to drop these. Yeah, so that's at least working. Now you can close this. And now bullet.parent equals game.workspace bullet.position equals tool.handle.position. All right, we've got all this, right? We do. All right, awesome. One thing we have to do here and we're actually going to change where its position is, is as follows, all right? So, tool.handle.position plus D times five. What this does is it takes the vector three, multiplies it by five, adds it to the other position, and moves it just five studs ahead and according to where you pointed your cursor. And last but not least, um, bullet dot velocity. Yeah, I know velocity is it's new. We have never used velocity in this uh, series before, but velocity, as I said, is the speed and direction of something. It's literally in the laws of physics. It's right there. Pretty obvious. Um, but velocity is just the speed and direction of something. So it's we could put equals D, and that would make it move very slowly, but it would move along. Very slowly, but it would, in fact, move. All right. And I'm, I'm seeing us getting into a problem with D here. Um, I think we're going to have to fix it somehow. But we're just going to multiply this by 100, and that makes it a heck of a lot faster. And actually not 100, that may make it too fast. Let's go with 20 for now. Uh, we'll, we'll amp up the speed once we know this is working properly. But for now, I just want to double check a couple things. Alright. We got our light. Shoot. Yeah, I figured something like this would happen. Uh, Alright, one second, guys. Alright, so... Look through the script. Look through the paintball script and a couple other gun scripts. Because as I said, I've never done this before myself, even. And I figured out our problem. So target pause is the position. But we need the direction. And, um... I have actually... Uh, another gun script up on my other screen and I'm looking at that for reference to double check that I know I that I'm getting what I'm doing right this time um, what we're going to do on this next line is going to make look at which equals and we're going to put a parenthesis around this which equals all right target pause minus char dot head dot position and then dot unit all right so vector threes also have a unit uh, variable property would be a better name for it property and I'm pretty sure that means that the X Y and Z they all are shrunk down to be like when you add them all up they'll equal one stud I think uh, but if it's not exactly that it's pretty similar and now that and now we'll put fire target pause and another th and no we if we have to we'll add this in um but i i think that should be an episode all on its own because it could be explained a lot all right light that's strange it's still not working hmm uh let's go back to our firing script we're still firing and giving target pause. We need to give look at. Once we give look at, 
This will work a heck a lot better, guys. A heck a heck a lot better. Alright, so now that we have look at in there, and this body force, there we go. We've got bullets flying upward because these things weigh like nothing. And that body force is terrible for them. Let's get rid of the body force. See, this is why I didn't want to put it in. Uh, control X. Because we might have to paste it. I don't know. Um, but, good thing I found that look at issue. Um, parameters are real, or what variables you supply can be so important. Alright, there. So, this is why we had the body force. Because they still fall, like, super easily. But our body force was a little too powerful. So, in the next tutorial, I'll go more over body forces. Um, in fact, I might just cut out what I taught today. Because this is, I've recorded for 25 minutes here. And that part's unnecessary if we're going over it tomorrow. So don't expect anything about body forces. Just expect me to talk about them and you guys be confused. Alright, but at least we're getting the bullets to propel themselves forward at least a little bit rather than just dropping like flies. And you guys can see we're leaving quite the trail of, uh, quite the trail of bullets. Alright, so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or the dislike button corresponding to how you felt about this video. And I will catch you guys later.